Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, few, but uh, God is here. Uh, that's for sure. I'd like to read from Psalm 90. This is a psalm of Moses. I think there are two psalms in out of the 150 that are penned by Moses, and this is one of them. It's a wonderful psalm, but we're just going to read the first two verses. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Uh, that's a great thought this morning. Uh, the Lord is God. He's not going any place. That's uh, very, very comforting to my heart, and I trust to your heart as well. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, uh, we call upon your name, um, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, uh, the, the one who framed us in our mother's womb, the one who has made everything that we see and everything that we don't see. And we're here, Lord, uh, to worship you, uh, to bless your holy name, and to lift you up for so great a salvation and for so great a gospel and for the wonderful, wonderful promises of God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, folks. Um, so please turn off your cell phones if you haven't done so already. I greatly appreciate that. Um, let me see. Um, so we're going to get back to a normal prayer and Bible study and we're going to be starting James chapter 2. Uh, wonderful, wonderful book. Very Jewish book, but very practical book. And uh, so we encourage you to that time, 7 o'clock. Uh, also, there's no coffee hour today. Uh, usually we have coffee hour the first Sunday of each month uh, because of all the sickness that's been going around and also because we have our annual business meeting, potluck supper in a couple of weeks. We've just decided to cancel it. Uh, but we'll resume that in, in February. Uh, discipleship class will uh, happen two weeks from this coming Sunday on the 21st after the service. The annual uh, church business meeting and potluck supper, as I just referred to, that's Saturday, January 20. So the potluck supper is at 5.30 and the business meeting is at 7 p.m. Also, um, Regarding membership, if anybody, an email went out, if anybody's interested in membership, uh, we are interviewing for membership a week from today uh, in my study in the other building after the morning service. Um, and let me see, what else do I want to say? Um, we, uh, we're still t collecting money for the sanctuary building project, but all the funds that were in that fund were actually transferred at our, at our business meeting on December 17th, primarily to address cleaning out the main lines in the other building and its branch, the main line and its branches. So, but we are, we, there are still envelopes on the back table in the foyer and we are still taking for that fund, okay? Um, that's all I have to share uh, this morning. Um, anything else for the good of the congregation? Anything else? Okay, so we're very, very few in number, um, but uh, we're still going to try to um, shout it out to God, right? Uh, number 686, oh God, our help in ages past. Please stand.
I just realized that we skipped the first song. <laughs> oh well. We can do that next week, right, Jerry? Oh my goodness. Okay, I'd like to read from uh, Luke, uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. These verses are so, so precious. You've got to love them, right? Uh, so he, that is Jesus, looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them, for they out, uh, all out of their surplus put into the offering. But she out of her poverty put in all that she had to live on. That's an amazing thing. So it teaches us it's not how much uh, as it is the condition of uh, the heart. Uh, Bob, Dave, please come forward. Bob, Dave, Bob, Drew. <laughs> you know, I, I, have to, I have to tell you, I, um, so I just got over COVID and I was telling the, guy, uh, the folks in Sunday school, um, I was rushing to get down here and I started to not feel well. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm testing negative, but I'm just not feeling well and I'm not myself. So anyway, but God will work it and throw it, I suppose. Uh, Bob, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Dear Holy Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Pray that you'll be with uh, the gift and the giver. Help us to use this money for the furtherance of your word, Lord. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so uh, we have our uh, time of prayer um, before. I'd like to actually open it up to uh, a time of prayer this morning. Uh, who or what is on your heart and mind this morning? Any, 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 any thoughts? Uh, Cindy, also. Cindy, yeah. So Cindy um, and her siblings uh, buried her father this past week, and. Um, Anyway, so uh, lift them up. Thank you that, for that, Jerry. Anybody else? All these on the pen? Yeah, all, all them. Yeah, so um, now hopefully I was prophetic when I mentioned Dave. Um, I was texting Dave the other day, and he's, uh, he's got a couple more infusions. Um, and um, hope he doesn't have a date yet for the surgery, but uh, a lot of fatigue and a runny nose. That's what comes with the infusions. Also, I, I spoke for about 25 minutes with Jerry Hartgrove this past week. Uh, wonderful conversation with Jerry. And um, anyway, so keep Jerry in your thoughts and prayers. And then I was praying for Edie this morning uh, that God would give her the, uh, a pain-free experience when she stands on her feet because they I think they did skin, skin grafts on her feet as well. Um, so uh, Keith Johnson uh, was texting with Keith yesterday, and uh, 
it's probably going to take Keith upwards of three months before he can drive, give or take. So pray for Keith. Uh, and then some of the others um, that, that are that are listed and mentioned. So uh, why don't why don't we have a word of prayer? Pray as you feel led, and I'll close our time. Okay. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all our blessings. Thank you for us being here today. Even though know we're a little family today, but we're still a family. Mm -hmm. And I pray for every single one of our on this prayer chain and you know each and every one of them and you know their needs. I pray for healing and peace and your grace. And I thank you so much for Jesus and I pray in his name. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence in this place today. And thank you for your presence in our hearts and lives. Uh, Lord, we don't know where we would be without you, uh, without your grace and your mercy and your strength, uh, without your salvation, without the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we would be eternally lost uh, wandering from place to place and thing to thing, uh, maybe marriage to marriage or job to job. We would just be um, family to family. We would be so aimless and so wandering. And um, we, we bless you that you bring a focus uh, to our hearts and lives. We bless you that you bring uh, stability we bless you that you bring truth and knowledge and grace, uh, great, great love, uh, lots of goodness and loving kindness to our hearts. And we're able to bless other, others with, uh, with what you've, uh, you've blessed us with. We're able to share the gospel. We're able to pray for others. We're able to encourage them. Um, 
just so many, many good things, Lord, that uh, flow from your heart uh, to our heart and to the hearts of many, many others. And we thank you that we're able to do these things in the name of Jesus, the one, the lover of our soul, uh, the one who loved us all the way to the cross, uh, the one who eternally forgives us, and uh, the one who always walks by your side, who promises never to leave us nor forsake us. Uh, Lord, even when we leave you, um, you're, you, you always follow, and you always come after us, and we bless you for that. Uh, thank you uh, that you're the hound of heaven and that you don't let go, and you pursue us all the more when we turn our backs on you. And we, we, we just can't uh, uh, thank you uh, enough. Uh, words, um, uh, we're at a loss for the words and, um, and for the devotion, uh, the thankfulness. And, and yet we uh, accept, Lord, we pray that you would accept, Lord, this morning what we're able to offer up and give you. Uh, we know that you'll, you'll take what we give you. Uh, thank you for each heart that's here today, and I pray, Father, that you would uh, comfort and encourage them, and uh, any burdens uh, or cares, uh, that you would make their hearts light, and that they would sense your presence, and that they would uh, sense, Lord, that you're um, working all things together for good, uh, because they love you, and they're called according to your purpose. Uh, also, Father, for those who didn't make it today, I pray the same prayer uh, that you would encourage uh, hearts and uh, strengthen them and, um, and continue to keep them until we're able to, to meet again. Uh, for those who are still struggling with the COVID, we pray that you would touch their bodies. And uh, for those who have uh, tremendous burdens of family, um, pray that you, uh, Father, would uh, minister um, through them and to their families. and. Uh, that they um, would be encouraged to know uh, that, that you're at work um, by answering prayers and ministering to their families. Uh, Father, I think of Cindy's family this morning. Um, pray that you would be the balm in Gilead uh, for them at this time. And uh, for those of her siblings that don't walk with you, uh, we pray that you would turn their hearts and that they would seek you during this time and that they would find you. And uh, just encourage Cindy, Lord, uh, thank you for her love and her faithfulness uh, to you and uh, to her family. And I just pray that uh, you, you would just minister and give her great, great comfort and peace during this time. Uh, lift up Dave, Edie, uh, Jerry, uh, Patricia Focal, uh, Fred, um, the uh, uh, the others, Lord, that I forget um, at at this time. But uh, we, we, your grace is sufficient, and I I pray that you would uh, remind them of that uh, this morning. That your grace is sufficient uh, in all things. Uh, again, we thank you for this time. We want to give you all the praise, the honor and the glory, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, um, Drew, you're going to read scripture this morning for us? scripture reading this morning is from Luke 18, 1 through 8, and that's on page 941 in the church Bible. Luke 18, 1 through 8, page 941. <coughs> now he was telling them a parable to show that at times they ought to pray and not to lose heart, saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. 
there was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God, nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection, otherwise by continually coming she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Thanks, Drew. Uh, I love that song. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, parable. I love that parable. Um,
Second scripture reading today is from Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11, and that is starting on page 868 in the Church Bible. Matthew 7, 7 through 11, page 868. Ask, and it will be given to you. <coughs> Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? Let's have a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we give you this time and may, um, may our hearts uh, be fertile ground to hear your word and uh, to receive it this morning. Uh, so we give you this time and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So folks, the last time we were together, I told you how I was speaking with someone who missed the opportunity to give gifts to loved ones around the holiday. And I recall I jokingly said to them, well, you could buy me gifts, right? Uh, I could use a new car and I could uh, use a house. Uh, hey, lots of money, whatever you want to give me, right? Well, I want you to know that I got a car. <laughs> it's a McLaren. And it's really cool that the, the the, the, the doors open up sideways, and it's fast. Uh, Brett was playing with it on the kitchen floor before he took off to uh, be on a ship. And anyway, so ask and you shall receive. I just want to, you know, say that, okay? Now, the other thing I want to say is if you see me playing with this in Fellowship Hall, and you decide to leave the church, I don't blame you, okay? <laughs> I, I would too, all right? Uh, but anyway, call the authorities and have me committed. Now seriously, um, God has been impressing upon me uh, the truth about asking and receiving and knocking, and especially with what the scripture says in James chapter 2, uh, chapter 4, verses uh, <coughs> Two and three. It says, uh, we do not have because we do not ask. Or we ask and do not receive because we ask with wrong motives. And so uh, this morning, I want to put, out, uh, put forth a New Year's challenge to us all to keep asking and to keep seeking and to keep knocking and to do it with the right motives to the glory of God. That's the challenge. Now, I don't know how many times you have read these verses in Matthew, uh, the, the passage that you, Drew just read, uh, but we've heard the verses many, many times. And, and, you know, but the question is, how often do we stay the course on asking and seeking and knocking? How often do we stay the course? How many of us are like the woman in the parable, Matt, Luke, Luke 18, morning, noon, and night, relentless and will not give up, and just badgers the unrighteous judge until he gets, she gets his ear, until he gives her a hearing? Most of us are not like that. Uh, we grow tired, we get weary, we get discouraged in our endeavors when we pray and we ask and we seek and we knock. And a lot of times we don't always see the results that we want. And so we give up. And yet, according to these verses here, the Lord repeatedly promises that persistence pays off. 
You know, uh, I love a very, very persistent person. I have a lot of faults, right, Jerry? But I am a very, very <laughs> persistent person. I mean, I will run into a brick, I tell you, this is how stupid I am, I will run into a brick wall 60, 60 times over thinking that I can take that wall down. I do not give up very easily. But God taught me that many, many, many moons ago. I don't give up. To a fault, actually. But I, I, I'm, sad, I'm sad to say that I don't always keep asking and seeking and knocking the way I should. If I were as persistent in my prayer times and in the things that burden my heart to go before the Lord, if I were as persistent as running into the brick wall, boy, I'll tell you, I would see, I would see kingdoms coming. I would, I would see Satan falling like a lightning, and I would see the darkness, the darkness and kingdoms just falling down and, and tremendous results. I, I don't know about you, but... Um, you know, I get tired and I get weary, uh, you know, and I'm not as relentless as this woman in the parable. And yet Jesus says it pays off. Now, um, I don't know uh, who, who's come up with New Year's resolutions this morning. Has anybody had New Year's resolutions? Sandy, you make a New Year's resolution. Anybody else make New Year's resolutions? I usually don't, but I did this year. You usually don't. Why don't you usually? Because you get frustrated because yeah. they never pan out, right? Uh, they're, they're a dime a dozen. They range from, here you go, they range from the physical, losing weight, I'm going to lose weight, to getting in better shape, to eating better, they, they sound familiar, right? <laughs> to being more active, right? Or here we go, self-help goals. I'm going to do better at time management. I'm going to be better organized. I'm going to have a better outlook on life. I'm not going to be as negative. Or I'm going to have a better me. I'm going to be a, have a better self, right? Those are all New Year's resolutions. And, and all of these are good New Year's resolutions, and we could all really benefit from them. But how much more would we benefit our souls and our hearts than our spirits if we tapped into the spiritual benefits of keep asking? and seeking and knocking because God says he's going to open it up and I, I started to think it would be totally transformative for me personally be transformative for families for our church um, situations I mean they're legion in terms of where you need God to show up right so uh, very very transformative uh, very quickly here I want to uh, Put this passage in its context. This is, uh, th this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount uh, ranges from Matthew's chapter, Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7. But this passage here is very, very relational. In fact, much of the Sermon on the Mount is very relational. But I, what I want you to see here is that Christ reveals the Father's heart to anyone who knocks or asks or seeks. That's the Father's heart. And the emphasis here is on God's goodness and generosity to respond. Everything here hinges on God's goodness to open up things spiritually and to answer prayers. It's, it's, it's all about his goodness. And he wants to share that goodness. Now, the asking here seems to probably take us back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. You know, when you typically do Bible study, you know, you always take a look at how words are used. And the word for ask is first shows up here in um, verse 8. And especially it's the context of the Sermon on the Mount. And, and so Jesus, let me read that verse for you. Uh, Jesus... Uh, told his disciples to not be like the hypocrites and all the people who love the showy places and like all the fanfare and all the attention. But he said, he said you know, uh, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And so the asking here probably takes us back to 
chapter 6, verse 8. And then the Lord talks about and teaches his disciples about how they should pray. Also, um, the seeking seems to refer back to chapter 6, verse 33. Uh, let me read that first. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Jesus just finished talking about food and clothing and shelter and how he'll provide all that, and we're not to worry about it. So we're to seek first his kingdom. Everything else will be met. How many people, you know, are just morning, noon, and night about stuff, and the last thing that they ever do is give thought about the kingdom of God? Happens. And then the knocking here uh, it probably doesn't take us back so much as it is forward, because if you take a look at verse 13 here, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. Uh, if you take a look at Luke's account, uh, Luke, uh, the, uh, the Luke's parallel account, Luke talks about asking for the Holy Spirit. Anybody asks for the Holy Spirit, God will pour it out. But the implications here are for salvation or for God opening up the spiritual door to spiritual opportunities. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, here's the problem. You're going to find some preachers that will tell you, hey, ask for that house or ask for that car. But clearly, the asking and the seeking and the knocking here in context has to do with spiritual things. Sanctification in prayer, the growth of God's kingdom in the heart, and the salvation of souls. And now, it doesn't mean that we can't ask for other things. Like, you know, you, know uh, you want your kids to ask when they have a need, and God wants his children to ask when they have a need. But the good gifts here that are being referred to are way beyond the basic needs and provisions. And, it, and again, it seems to suggest that it has more of a spiritual angle to it than simply a material. And people get so hung up on the material, don't they? But it's, it, I mean, the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking and stuff. It's about the kingdom of God blossoming in the heart and where it goes to other hearts as God ministers to us, we have a chance to share him with other people. The other thing here too, and this is not mentioned in, in, in Matthew or in Luke, but if you go over to 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, John reminds us that if we ask uh, anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, you know, the cars, the homes, you know, God will provide the basic needs, right? But, you know, when you talk about God's will and work in your life and your heart and how you want him to accomplish something in your life and your heart for the kingdom of God, you ask according to his will, he'll do that. We forget that. And so he, he says, ask of me, seek of me, knock, and I will open the door. Uh, Brothers and sisters, uh, what graciousness, what goodness, what generosity. You will not find a better offer this side of heaven from God Almighty than to ask in the sink and the knock. You know, people run down to Walmart. They get some great deals on Amazon. Oh, you, they tell other people about this deal and that deal. I'm telling you about a great, great deal here where God says, ask of me, seek of me, and knock. And he promises to deliver. Take a look at, uh, quickly, take a look at verse 11 here. This is, a, this is an emphatic assertion that God will do so much more than earthly parents. Now, you know, for those of us who are parents here, you love your children, right? As Marie Harrison would say, cradle to the grave, you love your kids. You'll do anything for your kids as long as it's going to be a blessing and not hurt them, right? Parents mean well. Um, you know, when we've raised our children, you know, you hope and pray that you do the right thing, but we never did it perfectly, right, Jerry? It's never perfect. And yet, 
The Holy Scripture says, God says, not only do I do it well, but I do it perfectly. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thought. And so the picture here is that the goodness of God is such that who will ever, who, whosoever comes to him and asks and seeks and knocks, God deals very bountifully, Phil, bountifully with them. Because that's, he's good. And so Jesus tells us to ask and God's going to do so much more than what we ask for. He delights in giving the best things. He delights in the, giving us the desires of our hearts when they're in accordance with his will. And he delights in giving us more than what we could ever ask or think. Uh, years ago, um, it was pointed out by one scholar uh, about the overflowing goodness of God and um, it, when the saints asked him. And, and let me just read a little list here. Uh, Abraham petitioned for the life of Ishmael as an heir, and God raised up Isaac. Uh, Ishmael was kind of like a wild donkey of a man. <laughs> Isaac was the exile. <laughs> Isaac was so much better than Ishmael um, as a blessing. Isaac uh, asked for a child. God gave him twins. Jo Jacob sought to barter with God for protection, and God made him an heir to the covenant. David asked God to spare his life, and God gave him a crown. Not only did he spare his life, a kingdom and a crown. Solomon asked for wisdom, and you know the story. He got glory and honor and riches. Right? And the list goes on and on and on about how God answers and gives beyond measure. And so these words are an invitation for all people to tap into the goodness of God, to ask and to seek and to knock. If we need wisdom, we're told to ask. If we need encouragement, we seek encouragement from God. If we need help, we seek him out. If we seek his grace and his strength, he's going to give it to us. We just have to ask. And I would say to you, ask him to do the impossible. Ask him to do the possible. And ask him for a miracle. Why not? We have not because we ask not. Right? And some, as many of us are just, you know, a lot of times we're just uh, in a, darkened in our heart and our mind and our understanding of, oh, well, God won't do that for me. Really? Why not? Why not? Uh, one scholar wrote, uh, each of these terms presents uh, what we desire of God in a different light. We ask for what we wish. We seek for what we miss. We knock for that from which we feel ourselves shut out. Brothers and sisters, it, it is so much, much more than that. It's so much more than what we wish for or miss or shut out from. That, that's consumerism. It has everything to do with what we spiritually need. And the Lord knows what we need before we ask him. And yet he wants us to ask. So this is the, this is the 2024 challenge uh, before us to keep on asking, to keep on seeking, and to keep on knocking. And, and the promise, it will be given, we will find, and it will be opened. That's what the Word of God says. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this wonderful, wonderful reminder. This invitation to come before your throne of grace and to take all of our cares and all of our burdens and all of our desires and all of our wants and all of our needs uh, and even those uh, burdens and needs that other people have. And we have the wonderful privilege and the opportunity uh, to, to seek and to ask and to knock and to do it repeatedly and insistently and persistently and frequently and boldly and to ask these things according to your will. And we know that when we do that, 
you always, always hear us. We, we pray that we would embark uh, on persistence and perseverance in these things and in these matters in 2024. And thank you, Father, in advance for the things that you're going to open up to us spiritually, uh, whether it's sanctification in our own life or in our own heart, or whether it's bringing somebody to faith, uh, saving their soul, because we've relentlessly prayed for them. Um, we, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We want to give you all the praise and the honor and the glory, and thank you for such a wonderful, wonderful invitation. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, folks, our um, communion hymn this morning is number 460. This is a good one. I love this song. Um, 460, let us break bread together. <laughs> 